All right, everyone, going to be breaking down the week 14 prop bets for both underdog and prize picks. Let's go ahead and get into it. And as always, I do like to kind of do a little bit of a game by game breakdown. So let's go and start out with the Texans versus the Jets. It's a three and a half point spread, really low scoring game at about 33 points. Brees Hall is currently questionable. Tough to say what that's going to mean offensively for the Jets, because while we are already expecting them to not play well, looking at the Texans, well, also a tough situation. We know that Dalton Schultz is out, Tank Dell is on the IR, and with all their injuries it's tough to say for sure who's going to get snaps last week we saw Devin Singletary get pushed back into that complimentary I don't want to say complimentary role but uh into not only a two-headed monster but into a three-headed monster logically speaking it makes sense that Dario Gumbo Wale would get work in the passing game he is their best pass catching back it's just strange it took that long for it to occur on all, all the two brain backs are going to be stayaways robert woods should get an uptick in, in snaps but really i think we're going to be looking at these three players as the most likely to get targets and potential results that being said they're going against the jets that is not something that we're going to love so really all in all this game is probably going to be a stay away but let's go ahead and take a peek and for the Jets, we're not really getting that many props for prize picks, at least. So I might just default to underdog a lot in this video, guys, simply because they typically have more props available. And as you can see, that's going to be the case here. Now, one of the better prop bets, I guess, for this game would be Garrett Wilson for over fantasy score. What's weird is that doesn't exactly correlate well with Zach Wilson for over fantasy score. Um, Tyler Conklin for over receiving yards. I'm okay with that. The thing with Tyler Conklin is, guys, we have seen when Zach Wilson is the quarterback, he does like throwing the football to Tyler Conklin. And so that actually might be a prop that I don't mind. Maybe more of a game stacking type of situation there, but not terrible. I do expect Garrett Wilson to be able to get over five receptions in this game. Sure, the Texans defense has been pretty solid, but all in all, I, I think we're going to see that uptick in targets that he was getting while Zach Wilson was the quarterback. And so it, I hate it because like, I think anyone that follows football knows that them going from Trevor Simeon or for, sorry, from Zach Wilson to Tim Boyle or Trevor Simeon wasn't going to be a good thing. And it's, it's, it's almost like they had to do it though, which is weird, but yeah, Tyler Conklin over receiving yards. That should be a good one. Gets a pretty good matchup against Houston. Like, I actually don't mind these, uh, prop bets a little bit more on a uh, underdog there fantasy score if you want to roll with that as well like i don't know in a weird way the offense does get a bump if they believe in zach wilson a little bit i guess uh looking at the other side of it we are seeing cj stroud for under fantasy score obviously going against the jets that is something that could occur the projection data actually likes the over a little bit more there so maybe just to stay away we are seeing nico collins for under 5.5 receptions that is one that i do find fascinating now a lot of people are going to have a poor take on i shouldn't say that a lazy take on why nico collins had a good game last game oh tank Dell was out so nico collins had a good game no if you're watching that he was well on his way to already having a good day and i would almost say be tank Dell being out is gonna hurt him especially in this matchup now with the jets i don't think you would attack the jets specifically prop aim wise with a player like nico collins who isn't moving around the offense too much that could be noah brown though Maybe Noah Brown has a decent game, but all in all, the Jets are a defense that you have been trying to stay away from. So overall, the under 5.5 receptions as one of the better prop bets, you know, at about 54% chance to hit, that one is okay. From there, I don't want to touch any of these like Devin Singletary. I liked his over receiving yards last week simply because they have been using him in the passing game. And I did mention, I'm like, it's, it's strange that they're doing it, but it, as long as they continue to do that, I'm fine betting the over. Well, no, last week they figured it out and they didn't do it. It makes sense. And yeah, all these are probably a little bit too thin. So let's go ahead and move on into the next game looking at this next game it's an interesting game it's the Bengals versus the Colts uh two and a half point spread or so 44 for the over and under so Jake Browning looked good guys uh injury wise for the Bengals nothing too concerning right now I should say the biggest question marks that I think we have or should have it will Joe Mixon see his running back snaps go down a little bit I think anyone watching it would say that Chase Brown in his 15 percent of the snaps looked like a better runner he actually showed me more than Joe Mixon has shown in the past two years now it could just simply be a case in which fresh legs probably some preconceived bias because I really like Chase Brown as a sleeper this year to overtake potentially Joe Mixon the issue with Joe Mixon is he does he is a good runner you know I, I put him it's it's a tough way to explain it like he is slightly above a better than average running back like there's plenty of replacement level backs that'll get work and look fine he is above that he's like the worst of the really good starting running backs in the league. and so I do expect Joe Mixon to still get work but if like Chase Brown does continue to get a little bit more and more work that wouldn't be too shocking Trenton Irwin 
predictably with T Higgins back and T Higgins was back. He played like 80% of the snaps, but Trenton Norman saw his snaps reduced. Tanner Hutz, only 17% of the snaps. He has been a great pass catching back for them. And he still was last week. Drew Sample is going to be much more of a run blocking tight end. And so as long as the game is close, he's going to be in the game more than Tanner Hudson. And so we start out with the Bengals. We are seeing Tyler Boyd for under 3.5 receptions is the best bet here. Uh, tough to say for sure if I really want to bet that. Could be a pass-heavy script. And if it is a pass-heavy script, I do like Tanner Hudson for over his receiving yards. That is simply because, again, game script-wise, he'd be the one that would get some more work. Uh, Jake Browning over rush yards. I don't think I want to push my luck on that too much. In this game, that was one that I mentioned last week to bet. And boy, it took the whole game for him to get the over there. Uh, and then, yeah, right now, I just don't love any of the prop bets that we are getting uh, for the Bengals. So let's go ahead and get into the other side of this football. Looking at the Colt, Zach Moss is expected to give a heavy work share. Now, I was a, a little bit offended when I was listening to uh, ESPN's fantasy focus coverage, I believe. And I listened to like a few different football podcasts throughout the week. They're pretty much dogging on my boy, Tyler Goodson, preseason stud from two years ago. I'm kind of joking, kind of serious. Like Zach Moss is just, you mentioned when I was like, or bringing up what I was saying about Joe Mixon being above average. No, Zach Moss is just a replacement level running back that's given a heavy workload. It wouldn't be shocking to see someone like, I don't want to hype up Tyler Goodson, but it wouldn't be shocking to see him get 10% of the snaps and actually have a productive game because this Colts offense has been pretty good, especially in the run game. Zach Moss should have a better game. Don't get me wrong, especially if he's playing that much. Should get a little bit more work in the passing game, especially if this game is projected to stay close. All in all though, I just don't love trusting Zach Moss. We have seen Michael Pittman basically does not leave this field at as does Alec Pierce. And then Josh Down, 70% of the snaps two weeks ago, 66% of the snaps last week. Those are the players that we want to be banking on in terms of predictability. And again, guys, I'm using underdogs simply because any of the prop bets that we probably would be getting for prize picks, underdogs are going to have available. And right now, yeah, we're not getting that many great ones. We are seeing Zach Moss for 18.5 rush. I do want to take a peek at that. Just look at his game log. I mean, shoot, I don't love it. Let's say maybe they're playing from behind in this game. Bengals are a good defense. I don't want to bank on him getting an extra, I don't know. No, I don't like that one. No, nope, not doing it. Receiving yards, I would think that he would be used in the passing game like they had done with JT and really him. Like 2.5 receptions, I'd like the over. But we can see all the prop bets that we're getting for the Colts are simply too thin. So moving on to the next game, we got the Bucks versus the Falcons. About 41 or so for the over and under looking at the spread a two-point spread uh looking at the injury report here offensively the falcons are good to go i mean they are still starting desmond ritter <laughs> funny jokes right um that being said guys just random thought like i feel like justin fields or ryan Tannehill are going to be the quarterback for the falcons next year random thought i feel like that would instantly make them a better team looking at the bucks they're going to be good to go as well now the question is chris godwin's health apparently he was limited last week the coach did come out and say we need to get chris godwin more involved so I don't know if we're going to see an uptick in work for Chris Godwin. We'll see. Looking at the bets that we are getting here, this is a big one here for underdog Trey Palmer. And I can almost guarantee that this will be adjusted. Um, so I won't even bother with it. Baker Mayfield rush yards. I don't really like messing with those. Rush attempts, though, potentially 2.5. And again, this is for underdog, but we're seemingly getting an edge there. I don't know. Two, three, 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 four. Pretty much gets on average over. I don't mind that one. That's a decent one there on underdog. 2.2 rush attempts. Baker Mayfield over. All right. And then, yeah, Chris Goblin is expected to get a little bit more work in this game. And so I don't mind that over. We are seeing Rashad White for his over 3.5 receptions. That's also a good one. Uh, rush attempts you could roll with as well. We are seemingly getting some pretty darn good bets here. So I do want to take a peek at really those three players. Goblin, White. White, and then even Trey Palmer. So guys, snap wise, the snaps have been there for really all those players. Like Chris Godwin was limited last week on the field. Snap wise, though, he was not. White playing a heavy snap share. And then Trey Palmer kind of seen a slight reduction in the snaps, but still playing over 60% of the snaps. Like that is still light. And so looking at White, I don't mind the over receptions at 2.5. Overall, like really him as a play kind of seems like a game script type situation where if they are playing from behind, White is going to get a lot more receptions. If they're playing with the lead, maybe you're looking at over rush attempts for him on all it really shouldn't matter like he's going to be involved in a heavy snap share again we look at the two receivers chris goblin trey palmer starting with chris goblin yeah he was not involved last week again they made a point of emphasis this week in saying that they want to get him more involved so if you want to do over fantasy score i don't hate that that's on fan duel or sorry on underdog 
And then it doesn't seem like prize picks is adjusting enough. Actually, never mind. The different calculation there, you probably wouldn't like it as much on prize picks. So never mind there to that point. And I do want to take a peek at Trey Palmer. So Trey Palmer continues to get a decent amount of targets. I mean, over four straight in basically every single game since week eight. I mean, that is a ton of work and a bunch of opportunities as well. Again, probably a little bit too thin, but all in all, still not a terrible bet. But that's really it in this game. Like a decent amount of good bets is what it seems like here for the buck. Let me look at the Falcons. I do find this to be fascinating here, guys, that we're seeing Kyle Pitt for over fantasy score on underdog as a good prop bet and i want to point that out because that is not the case when we switch and get into prize picks prize picks is kind of saying that johnny smith you know a three yard difference that's going to be a good prop bet tough to say if that'll change or not van jefferson i'm curious as to how many snaps he's been getting yeah so van jefferson 51 percent last week the two weeks prior less than 40 and then like when he came to the falcons instantly had snaps i don't know what to do with him honestly because they probably don't know what to do with him <laughs> so uh mostly just to stay away there but yeah prize picks wise not getting a big edge it seems like uh prop wise but we are seemingly an underdog with Kyle Pitts now they made a focal point of getting Kyle Pitts the football last week I, I kind of wouldn't be surprised if that happens again this week like the Bucks are a poor defense especially against guarding opposing tight ends we see the snaps for Kyle Pitts I mean they're up over the last three weeks you know we'd love to see that and so all in all I do expect him to continue to be productive now maybe he won't crush it but all in all that seems to be a decent prop out there on underdog from there the rest of them probably a little bit too th so moving on to next game we got the panthers versus the saints a game that is supposed to be kind of ugly uh six point favorites are the saints but who knows i mean both teams haven't looked good recently uh 39 for the over and under so yeah a very low scoring game total uh looking at the injury report Derek Carr questionable uh chris Olave questionable tough to say juan johnson questionable honestly it's tough to say what to do with the Saints offense all in all the one player that we probably want to go in on regardless is going to be Alvin Kamara and so he's probably going to be the one that we're just looking at for the Panthers they're healthy one of the profits I liked the most at the start of the week was actually Jonathan Mingo for over 3.5 receptions that was without any sportsbook data we'll see if that one holds up obviously the Saints are a pretty decent defense and so not exactly a big edge for that one 3.5 receptions the reason I like that is because the snap share is up and the targets are there this is a game in which the targets should be there again interesting that Miles Sanders over rush attempts is the best one for the Panthers Let's take a peek at prize picks as well, just to make sure. Prize picks wise, yeah, we're not really like we're just not getting that many good prop bets for the Panthers. That does make sense again. I do like Mingo a little bit better, but that's gonna be a better bet on one of the sports books. Uh, let's take a peek at the Saint. Elvin Kamara is the player I probably want to be going in on the most. <sighs> Jawan Johnson, tough to say what to do with him. Yeah, Elvin Kamara, 59 rush yards does seem low to me. I want to see if we're getting any rush attempts props on something like underdog instead. So let's take a peek at that. Anytime touchdown, that's one that's popping up. Chris Olave receptions at five. I'm okay with that. I guess Evan Kamara, anytime touchdown, that's one of the best ones on the on the board for underdogs. So I'm fine rolling with that one. But that's kind of it there. Let's go ahead and pivot on into the next game. Next game, we got the Lions versus the Bears. Very interesting game in terms of like the running backs. We don't really know exactly what to expect from all five of them. <laughs> that being Foreman, Roshan Johnson. A little Herbert, Justin Fields, <laughs> just joke. Um, David Montgomery, and then also Jameer Gibb. But seriously, we don't know how much uh Justin Fields is going to rush the football. Looking at the injury report, it actually would be a big difference whether or not Tyler Scott plays because St. Brown is out. And so that might just force like DJ Moore to be on the field for 100% of the snaps, honestly. And then like even uh, Darnell Mooney would be on the field a little bit more. So interesting to see what they do there. Troy Lions starting to get a little bit banged up, but this could be a higher scoring game. So it could be a, kind of a fun game. Let's take a peek at the prop bets that we're getting for Chicago. And so for Chicago, yeah, Roshan Johnson, I really don't know what to do with this. I like, I don't know, like no one does, let's be honest but uh i have not seen it on film as to why the bears love roshan johnson as much as they do he had five targets five receptions 40 yards like that looks good and all but most of the yards were there for him rushing the football like he was a worse version of deonta foreman and so with foreman back i expect him to get the work but all in all like herbert is still their best back it's just it's one of those head scratchers like get him the football he's your best playmaker other than fields rushing the football and maybe they just like johnson a little bit more as like a pass blocking running back but I, it's very difficult to say what to do with these running backs because johnson was the lead running back last week but foreman was out we could be getting some sort of free square on one of these that's kind of the issue whether it's cool herbert smashing the over now i will say like these probably correlate right here like if it is another johnson game it's tough to imagine cool herbert having a dominant game but if they're playing from behind herbert it's tough to say like herbert i think is the better pass catch bad but they seem to like Roshan a little bit more again probably because he's better at blocking I haven't looked up the data on that but 
just an assumption. Oh no, it does feel to be some stayaways here for this offense. And then we look at Detroit. We kind of know he's going to get the football for Detroit. What's fascinating here is what to do with David Montgomery because the under being this heavy pretty much tells me that the data does not expect him to get a touchdown. And so with that, if he's not scoring a touchdown, that's going to be difficult for him to get the over fantasy score. A little bit game dependent. You do see he's projected to get 16.6 rush attempts via the sports picks, via prize picks and whatnot as well. So interesting there. Now I expect to get work in the receiving game as well. I think that's why we are seen the under being favored now i do think it's pretty clear in a game that's close we might see a little bit of an even split actually we might even see a little bit more jameer gibbs in a game where they're playing with the lead trying to run out the clock it's going to be david montgomery so if you are making any bets in this game just remember that game script wise from there the profits are a little bit too tight checking into the next game we got the rams versus the ravens actually one of the most fascinating spreads i would say this week rams have been playing better ravens have not been playing better uh you look at lamar jackson with america andrews off the field he just doesn't do his ceiling is not as great let's put it that way seven points seems to be a little bit too high with how well the rams have been playing take a peek at the injury report who's more injured well it's the ravens now i do think tyler higby being out is kind of a big mover like it might not be much but he was someone that was basically playing 90 percent of the snaps throughout the whole season and i just expect like Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, if healthy with Puka Nakua, to just get force fed the football this game. And a lot of people haven't been high on Cooper Cup lately, including the data. I could see them both having solid reception games. Now, Baltimore is a more difficult defense. I get that and all, but all in all, I don't know. I think I think this could be a sneaky good game for Cooper Cup to get over 4.5 receptions, for Puka Nakua to get five receptions, heck, for Kyvin Rollins to get three receptions. That's kind of the issue, though, is that the lines that we're getting, at least for prize picks or underdog purposes, are correct. Like, those are all better bets on DraftKings or FanDuel. Looking at the other side of this game is the Baltimore Ravens, and the biggest question mark we have is who's going to be the lead running back? And unlike the situation with uh, Devon HN, where some people might be looking at the snaps and be like, okay, HN's the RB1, where it's probably still Moster given the game flow. It might be Keenan Mitchell in this game. It might actually be him. I bring that up. Those two are very comparable running backs, but we had already seen this progression starting to take place 17, 22, 37, 46% of the snaps, but it'll probably be capped at that. And my worry is that if they are playing with the lead, I do think it'll probably be Gus Edwards getting a lion's share of the work. So if you think that line's wrong, kind of like I do, then maybe you are looking at Keenan Mitchell to have a good game. Look at the props that we are currently getting for them, at least on prize picks. Lamar Jackson, under 1.5 anytime touchdowns, decent under there. From there, I found this one to be weird for Isaiah Likely, who played a bunch in absence of Mark Andrews. I would say he probably will get four receptions in this game, so all in all, probably just to stay away. But yeah, I find it crazy that the rush yard line uh for attempts is at nine for keaton mitchell and i was hoping that we would give one actually for gus edwards we are 9.5 okay again game script wise i would expect him to actually get more carries than that game script wise i kind of expect them to run out the clock so i really don't mind that as an overbet there for gus edwards then we go ahead and take a peek at kind of uh underdog keaton mitchell over perceiving yards is decent but none of these are like perfect bets all right so moving on into the last afternoon game that we have or early game i should say jaguars versus browns three point spread 33 and a half is the over and under i'm not sure quarterback's been confirmed yet whether it's dtr or joe flacco uh i do think joe flacco a little bit more of a check down guy probably does help with the pass catchers a little bit more it's just to me the browns are probably just a stay away jacksonville christian kirk went in the ir okay parker washington was someone that i probably overhyped in the preseason at the start of this season in the preseason kind of bailed me out a couple of times dfs wise so i don't know he was someone i hyped up but i was still a little bit shocked at his performance like if you had told me prior to the preseason that he'd done that i wouldn't have been surprised but given how little they featured him in the preseason it was a little bit surprised in that regard where you know i bring up puka nakua tank dell you know those types even malik heath being decent like their production has not really been shocking so to me that does seem to be like a one-off situation uh, something that just seemed to happen during that game i mean but he did have six targets one touchdown 60 yards i mean he certainly looked good certainly played the christian kirk world pretty well but i just don't think we're going to be able to bank on that again now i'm not even sure if we're getting any props for him just yet let's take a peek and actually i think because of the trevor lawrence news we're not getting any props on oh maybe let's see yeah we're not getting any props for that because of us not having trevor lawrence news that makes sense to me and actually, we might not be getting that many Cleveland Brown props because of that as well. We are Jerome Ford, brush attempts, but all in all, again, I feel like the Browns are stayaways as well. This game, just to stay away to me tough to predict all right so now getting into the afternoon games which man we got some pretty good afternoon games starting with the vikings versus the raiders okay maybe not the best one to start with but still interesting 40 
points uh, for the over and under. About a three-point spread. Justin Jefferson is back. I believe both teams are coming in off of a bye, if I remember correctly. Max Crosby is currently questionable. I think we're all expecting him to play. But if he were to sit, that would definitely help out the Vikings offense. And then we, I don't know if we have word on the quarterback here. I think we're all assuming it's going to be Joshua Dobbs. But it wouldn't be surprising if he were to struggle to see Nick Mullen. And now looking at the prop bets that we are getting, I will say... Yeah, KJ Osborne to get under 18.5 receiving yards does make a lot of sense, especially with Justin Jefferson back. The thing with Justin Jefferson is they made it very clear that they didn't want him to play and he didn't want to play until he was thinking he was 100%. Now, his injury is one of those, and I don't want to claim to be an injury expert, but based off of what I have seen around the spaces is that with this type of injury, you don't know if you're 100% until you give it a go. Uh, but all in all, he feels like he's good to go. Uh, I do find this one for uh, TJ Hawkinson, really in general for TJ Hawkinson. I feel like his fantasy scoreline is extremely low. I feel like his receptions total is extremely low. Uh, he is someone that has been playing extremely well this season as a whole. We look at Joshua Dobbs as a quarterback. He was really force feeding the football to both Zach Ertz and then Trey McBride for a little bit. I know Justin Jefferson is back, and that's why the unders are being favorited there. All in all, I still think Hawkinson's going to be involved. That to me is a strange line. Now, all in all, probably just want to stay away from it. But at the start of the week, when the line was at 5.5, I was thinking I'd want to bet the over there. So that tell you my kind of confidence in that. But I think again, part of the reason as to why that is being favorited for the under is because Justin Jefferson. His has already gotten bumped up to six receptions. So I mentioned both of them at 5.5 receptions. I thought they had a good chance to get the over. Well, now Jefferson's has since been bumped to six. I think they're both going to be involved. The biggest question mark I have is, is Jordan Addison actually maybe going to get a little bit of a bump now, now that he's really not the top pass threat in the game because the last two games for Hawkinson, he, he had been a little bit banged up. Again, I think the bye week is going to be good for him. So all in all, maybe the Vikings players are props that we're staying away from. Dobbs at 17 for a fantasy score is extremely interesting, just given the fact that none of his other passes catchers are really being favored for the over we take a peek at las vegas we are seeing josh jacobs for over 14 for a fantasy score 53.7 percent chance to hit don't mind that one and that's really going to be it guys like all the other ones are pretty much only okay like to me jacoby myers for over nine for a fantasy score is seemingly one that we'd want to bet the over on but given the fact that the percent likelihood isn't that high? I'm okay with passing up on them. So now touching on the Seahawks versus the Niners, a 13-point spread in favor of the Niners winning. Crazy, right? The question I have then is, if they are going to be winning by that much, how much of CMC are we actually going to see uh, it is a very high game total. And looking at this, like it's probably going to be Jordan Mason as the RB2. Looking at the Seahawks, they are pretty questionable, okay? Both the running backs are questionable. I don't know if that matters too much. I do think Kenneth Walker being healthy is a bump for this offense. I think we saw that last week. Geno Smith currently questionable as well all in all given the likelihood of this game being a blowout i'm not sure we're going to see that many profits that we're going to like starting with seattle i will say in a negative game script i would say both of these would actually make more sense for the over so i'm kind of disagreeing with the data there especially for jsn where i think he's his uh work is kind of much locked in there all in all that's really all we're getting i do want to take a peek at underdog seeing if we're getting any props for them on underdog that are better. No, not at all. Take a peek at the Niners now. <laughs> Niners, uh, CMC under fantasy score. That's fascinating. That's that low. Like, that's a projected edge that we have. And I, I'm assuming that is simply coming because of the potential blowout, like the lack of a ceiling for him. Like, everyone, uh, everyone's been playing well in this offense. Debo, Ayuk, Kittle. And so maybe we do see a little bit less of CMC. Yeah, that's not one that I want to bet on. Then again, we'll take a peek looking at it from prize picks perspective. Kind of the same stuff. Brian Ayuk is decent, but all in all, those are all prop bets that I'm most likely just wanting to stay away from. Now we get into the game that I think a lot of people are going to be excited for. I am too as a fan. Uh, it's a 46 or 48 and a half, uh, 48.6 for the over and under. I'm going to have spread one point spread. That's going to be the Bills versus the Chiefs. Uh, so some injury news for the Chiefs. Isaiah Pacheco has been ruled out. And so with that, we got to decide, is it going to be Jarek McKinnon getting the work or is it going to be CE8? I, I think CE8 has done pretty well in limited workload this year. And I do still think they're going to try to limit McKinnon for as much as the season as they can possible. So maybe it is more of CE8 in this game. Tough to say for sure. We do know that Rice has been someone that has stepped up into a bigger role as well, playing a lot more snaps, but in the snaps that he is playing, he's getting a lot more work. Nine targets last week, 10 targets the previous week. It does seem to be that they are making a point of emphasis to get him the football, which is a little bit different than what they were trying to do at the beginning of the season. Yeah, so looking at the Chiefs, it does make sense kind of what we are seeing where CH for the fantasy score, the unders being favored. Again, that, that seems to be a guessing game. 
And so Vegas probably is maybe expecting more of a 50 50 split there. Um, I, I think it does make sense. risk reward there. If he's the RB1, he's going to crush that. If it's a 50 50 split or even a 40 60 split in favor of McKinnon getting more work, then CH is not going to get there. And then the receiving prop that we're getting for McKinnon would be a pretty good one to hit the over. Uh, Rice for under fantasy scores certainly interesting i don't know if i agree with that uh again if this game is going to be as high scoring as it's supposed to be i probably just don't want to touch either of those two fantasy score props and it's crazy justin watson has been playing so many snaps lately just knocking as many receptions lately it's kind of crazy take a peek at buffalo i'm very curious about james cook because since the new defense or the offensive coordinator has taken over he has been someone that has been heavily involved in this offense so we look at the rush yards here kind of interesting receptions at 2.5 very interesting the issue that we have is they still not getting the workload that you would want still less than 50 percent of the snaps that's not good but all in all he's, he's kind of proven that he's clearly better than murray and he's actually a pretty good running back hopefully this week they kind of figure out that they need to give him some work i do want to point out and that's actually just double check this okay so we don't have an update on dawson knox so we do need to get this because one of uh, a very good source of profitability for us this season was when dawson knox went out i kind of mentioned that i thought we were going to see dalton kincaid operate as more of the traditional tight end and he was being undervalued for those games where dawson knox was out but so was khalil shakir and now with knox potentially being back if he is back Back, I think both of those two could take a, a big knock, a big knock. And like we look at it when Knox left, he was playing 62% of the snaps. So we see Kincaid was playing about 55 or so percent of the snaps. That skyrocketed. And now his sense kind of gone down. Khalil Shakir as well. He instantly saw an uptick in targets and snap. Now, I don't know if that's going to change or not. Like they, I feel like they almost have to keep him on the field now. And is Dawson Knox first game back? Who's to say how many snaps he's going to get? But that that is one in which where I'm seeing this uh, under for Dalton Kincaid as being an okay one and the under for Shakir for receiving yards. That's one where I could actually get behind it this week. All in all, though, we're seeing that we're not getting really any great bets, surprisingly. And so this is much more of a game stacking game. Digs over fantasy score, maybe Josh Allen over fantasy. Like you could just kind of blindly stack this game, I think, given the close nature of it and given the high scoring nature of it as well we move on into the next game the last game that we have for this preview the broncos versus the chargers 44 is the game total two and a half point spread in favor of the chargers pretty shocking because the chargers have not been playing well joshua palmer they kind of do need to get back he is still on the ir i believe probably still two weeks out it seems but who knows so P. ryan being out would for the broncos would most likely lead to uh Jill mclaughlin just getting a little bit more work He's a player that they like, but all in all, it kind of seems like a straightforward game. So go, <laughs> once you figure the best prop that we're getting for Denver is under for P. Ryan, and we don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, Russell Wilson under pass completion is about a 54% chance for that one to hit. Uh, Javante Williams, 15.5 rush attempts. We can see that's a little bit different. You'd actually probably be better off betting the under on underdog at 16.5. Definitely a discrepancy there. All in all, it still feels like we're probably getting a little bit too thin of props for this game right now. And then let's take a peek at the Chargers. Now, I thought Keenan Allen for his uh, receptions prop was too low. But no, the data is actually telling us that's a little bit too high. I, I, I expect him to get targeted heavily as my th And man, if Austin Eckler gets 13.5 rush attempts and doesn't have a good game, that's going to be ugly. I will say Jared Everett at under 7.5 fantasy score is not one that I like as well. So all in all, I feel like we got the good game by game breakdown. Let's go ahead and give you guys the best prop as for the the slates and i do just want to call out that like field goals made and like tackles and assist props those don't exactly pop up in the the game by game breakdown just as an fy and so looking at underdog kind of for the bet of the day here for you guys laporta over fantasy score alvin kamara over uh touchdown going against carolina they're heavy favorites that one makes sense and then i don't exactly love jordan addison as much as the data does but all in all not too crazy to see him getting let's say four catches for 40 yards maybe a little bit more than that obviously we do think justin jefferson tj hoggins are gonna be the better options and i do actually really like the jacoby myers one so if, i don't know if you didn't want to use this one by all means you could just roll with those three and have yourself a pretty good standard or insured slip uh insured slips guys only really like to do those on five says and fy so guys for kind of the field goal problem I still feel like these are still some of the better ones that we're getting on this slate. So I'm probably going to include those in the bed of the day slip. Kicking points wise, not really a big edge there. And then tackles and assists wise, maybe a slight edge here. This is something that right when I started the video, a lot of the good tackles and assists props that we had 
were bumped up away from being great bets. And then for the bet of the day here for NFL, I'm still looking at those field goal props. Now, I did mention some pretty decent game stacking opportunities that we have and whatnot. I'm going to be running those out, especially a couple of the earlier games. But still, this to me, these are both pretty good EV bets. I'm perfectly fine with them. I kind of agree with the situation with games as well. That's going to be all for this video, guys. Make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the coverage uh, and want some more access to those tools. You know, they're updating throughout the slate and, and whatnot. They're available at 95sports.com for just $10 a month. Thank you guys for watching. Let's have a good slate. And as always, let's keep cashing.